Hello everyone, it's Jen. I'm guest designing for Scrapping for Less this month with the April 2020 Flavor of the Month card kit called City Streets and Country Roads. I'm going to create six cards with you today. These three are the ones that we will start off with, and this is from the Super Host Collection. There are amazing stamps in this kit and great pattern papers, which you'll see as I create the cards. If you want to see a full unboxing, I do have that video separately, and I will link it at the end of this video so that you can see everything that comes in the kit. As well, I'll have links below if you're interested in placing an order. Scrapping for Less is still shipping. They are a small uh, family business and they're able to run the company out of their house during this time. So if you want to have a card kit to work on while we're all staying at home, then you might be interested in this one. So for the cards today, I'm going to color some of the images with you. For this little image, I'm going to color the super dude, and uh, there's also a little girl in the stamp set, and I'll show you that here once I'm done coloring him. But I just decided to color a lot of these images while I was watching TV, and I practiced my coloring with different skin tone color combinations and hair colors, so I have some of these images with some darker skin tones, some medium, and then some more fair skin tones, and then have different hair colors as well. And I'll show you that here once I'm finished coloring him up. So for most of the coloring today, I'm going to be doing three color uh, blends. And as always, I have the marker caps to the left-hand side of the screen ordered from darkest at the top all the way to lightest at the bottom, which makes it, I think, a bit easier for everyone to follow along. So for the reds, I'm using R39, R29, and R24. When I'm doing reds, I tend to like to lay down quite a bit of that lightest red color and then go in with a very light hand with my darkest marker near the edges, the lines of the image, now, if you do alcohol marker coloring, you know that reds are the easiest to bleed. So I just want to be really careful as I'm blending out these colors. But these three here blend really nicely together. So as I work my way from darkest to lightest, I'm just going to pull that color across the image. For the cape, I wanted to have a large highlight with the lightest marker. Typically, you would want the midtone to color, sorry, to cover the majority of the image. But like I said, I really wanted his cape to be nice and bright red. So moving on to his outfit here, I decided to use B97, B26, and B24. So these images are really simple to color. They're a little bit on the smaller side, so you can color them up fairly quickly and they'll be ready to go for your cards. Now you can see here the blue did bleed just a little bit onto his face. I don't know if it bled or I just touched it. Uh, so I did go ahead and bring in the colorless blender to push that blue back into his outfit. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit while I do his outfit and then you'll see at the end here, I'm gonna bring those skin tones back and just fix that up and you'll never know. For his belt, I'm going to use some yellows along with the stars that come in the stamp set, which I'm going to use on all of the cards that I'm making today. And for that, I'm using Y17, Y13, and Y11. He also has just a little kind of medallion or uh, crest on his chest there underneath the tie for his cape, which I colored yellow as well. I did the bottom of his shoes there with C5 and C3, and here's where I'm cleaning up the skin. Just going to add a little bit of red to the small sections of his belt, and he's complete. And here's a look at the other little superheroes that I colored as well. So let's jump in to card number one. I went ahead and I cut a couple of pieces of the pattern paper with some stitch rectangle dies. 
Now obviously you can see here that blue one is quite a bit smaller. I wanted those circles to be around the outer edge and then I'm using that blue pattern paper as the background for my sky. I am bringing in some stitched clouds here from my stash. These happen to be from Heffy Doodle and they come in a set with three different sizes and they are a staple in my craft room. If you don't have dies, you can always just cut your own with some scissors and some white cardstock. So this is a fairly simple design. I wanted to have my one little superhero here flying through the sky. I'm going to add those little clouds down across my scene here. And then I'm going to add the sentiment on to one of the clouds. The sentiments for this stamp set are really great. There's one that says, you are amazing. Thanks for being a super host. And then the one that I'm going to use on this card is I still believe in heroes, which I think is great. And I think it would work really well as well for the times that we're currently in. You could send this card to a healthcare professional or perhaps someone who is still working for essential services. And I think that this would really brighten their day. So that's kind of what I had in mind while I was creating this card. That one uh, star there to the top, I decided to tuck behind the cloud and then I just had the other ones to the left and the right hand side, just kind of trying to balance them. So I'm gonna bring out my mini Misty here, my stamping tool, just to help ensure that I get a good crisp image on that cloud. And again, the sentiment is, I still believe in heroes. So I'm going to stamp that out with my VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is my ink of choice for sentiments. So once I have that done, I'm just going to bring in some black glaze pen for his eyes. I'm also going to bring in a white gel pen to add some details. Now the kit will come with a white or black gel pen if you have the banana split level. The one I'm using I already had opened, but they will work just the same. So moving on to card number two. This one I had a lot of fun creating. I'm just gonna create a really simple background here. I'm using some Bristol Smooth cardstock for this and some Salty Ocean Distress Oxide, and I'm just blending that on with one of my blending brushes. I'm just gonna make sure that I get good coverage here. I'm gonna add some water with my Distress Sprayer I'll let that sit and then I'll pick up that excess water with my microfiber cloth. This will give me just a really nice light background and I'm going to make a shaker card. So there's this piece of pattern paper that has this cityscape repeated on it. I just cut one of them out and I'm going to have that anchored to the bottom of my piece of paper here, which I have cut down to a four and a quarter by five and a half, and then I cut the center out with a stitched rectangle die. I added a little piece of transparency. So I use some overhead transparency, and I will link that down below, as well as everything else in the video that I use. It is really economical, and it works great for shaker cards. So I'm going to go ahead and add my transparency, and then behind that I'm going to add this cityscape piece of pattern paper that I've cut out. Once I do that, I just want to figure out where my images are going to be. I'm going to stamp my sentiment on that background paper that I created, so the sentiment will actually be on the inside of the card. I actually thought that this style of card would make for a really cute photo frame as well. You would just have to move some of the images a little bit more to the sides, but I thought it would be really cute if you had a picture of someone in a superhero costume. So instead of making a shaker card, you could do a similar design as a photo frame. So now that I have my sentiment stamped out, which reads, thanks for being a super host, I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my images to the front of this card panel here. Again, bringing in those cloud dies to kind of fill out that little scene here. Once I get these all in place, I will go ahead and add my foam tape off screen. 
I use Burtek foam tape, which I get from Amazon. I only add one layer of dimension. I'm just going to make sure those images are set nicely and then add some foam tape around them. I'm going to use my little powder tool here to make sure that the edges aren't sticky. Added some sequins from my stash. I have some little yellow stars and then some uh, black, yellow, red, and blue sequins there. I added another piece of transparency to the back of that, which just makes it really easy to put a shaker card together. So now that I have that done, I am going to lay a stamp block on that. And then I can go ahead and do my final touches here. So I'm going to add three more stars to the front of this card. And I love how we have our little Supergirl there to the bottom right standing in front of the buildings and then our super guy up top flying through the air. So moving on to card number three, I'm using sketch number two, which you can download four sketches from the Scrapping for Less website for inspiration. I followed this one almost exactly. I loved that star pattern paper and I really wanted that to be the focus of the card. So there's two little cross uh, patterns of paper behind a focal point with a circle. And so I just used some of the pattern paper that I had left over from the previous cards for those long rectangle sheets there. I used some black cardstock for my circle. I am going to just make sure that I have all of those pieces of paper, papers good and adhered. And then I added some foam tape to the back of that. I'm using a piece of vellum just to kind of tone down that really bright, busy pattern paper that I'm using for my card. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create my card with putting everything on top of the vellum before I put the vellum down on to the pattern paper. Now you can see here it was a little bit off-centered, but that's okay, it still turned out okay. So I did change up the sentiment a little bit in the sketch. It is just straight edges. I decided to do some fishtail banners here. And the sentiment that I'm using is you're amazing. Again, another great sentiment that you could use for any occasion, as well as just to kind of send to someone right now who is doing a really great job and you think is amazing. So I love the versatility of this particular stamp collection in this month's kit. So again, I'm going to arrange some of those clouds behind our little superhero. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere the sentiment down to make sure I have that in place before I adhere the rest of the images down. I'm gonna start from back to front. I find that the easiest. So I'm going to adhere that cloud to the top right first and then I'll move to the one to the left, and then this final one here to the bottom right, which is just overlapping that uh, focal circle down near the sentiment. So I'm gonna add my little character. You could pop him up on some foam tape as well if you wanted some added dimension. And now I can go ahead and figure out where I want to add my star. So these are gonna help hide some of the adhesive on my card so that vellum isn't flapping. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere those down with liquid adhesive first, and then I can flip over this whole vellum piece and I can add liquid adhesive behind all of those areas and that will just hide the adhesive and you won't see that on the vellum. So I'll get that down into place and then I'll do some final details and give you a close-up look at this card. Had a lot of fun with this collection. Really cute little superheroes. I could make superhero cards all day long. So you can see here just adding some white and black gel pen details. And then here's a close-up of that card. So moving on to the Howdy Partner collection. I'm gonna color up these cute little cowgirl and cowboy images. This is a Sunny Studio stamp. And I'm going to use various color combinations for their skin. 
So for the darkest skin tone, I'm going to use E15, E13, and E11. And then for the lighter, I'm going to use E13, E11, and E00. They're going to be very similar. So just making sure here to get their hands and for her, the little areas on her legs just under her dress and making sure not to forget about their ears as well. So once I get those blended out, I'm gonna use some R20 for some blush, and then we can go ahead and work on their hair. So for this particular girl, I'm going to use E33, E53, and then I do have a Copic Chow marker there. I'll show you the color of that in a second. It's Y21. So this is becoming my favorite new combination for blonde hair. I think it works really well and blends nicely. I'm going to give him a little bit more of a darker hair color. So I'm gonna use E25, E35, and E33. Adding those darkest areas just right underneath the hat on the hairline and then down lowest by their ears, leaving a little bit of a highlight in the center. I am going to use the same color combination for their outfits. So I decided to do a darker brown for these two. I did multiple variations of browns. Again, I'll show you the picture of all of the ones that I colored up. For this one, I'm using E79, E77, E74, and E71. You want the underneath of the hats to be the darkest, and then I just added some of that darkest marker to the outsides of the hat and the little vest as well. And then blending that through as I go through the various markers, leaving the lightest there for the center. Now I do go ahead and show you the coloring for his little chaps and I believe his vest as well, but I will speed through the um, hat because you already saw me color hers. But if you notice, I forgot to finish the rim of her hat. So I'll show you how I did that. I left that to be really light. So I did take one of the darkest mar markers to the bottom and then I'm blending that out with my E71. So there I have all of the browns complete. And for these guys, I'm going to do some pink and teal or aqua colors to match some of the pattern paper from this collection. So for the pinks, I'm using R85, R83, and RV11. I'm going to do her dress and shoes and then his little bandana or handkerchief around his neck. And then for the blues or the aquas, I'll do his pants and then her belt and little bandana as well as the bands on their cowboy and cowgirl hats. So these were super fun to color up. I think they are just the cutest little images and I love how the cards turned out. I will be making two cards with you today for this collection once I get the coloring complete there. I am just gonna do a little bit of shading for his white shirt using C3, C1, and then I'll blend that out with the colorless blender. And then for his little sheriff's badge, I'm gonna use Y28 and Y23. And for his boots, I used C5 and C3, and I used those two colors on his belt as well. So there's the images done. Here are the other ones that I completed. And now we can move on to the first card with this collection. So I went ahead and again, I cut out some of the pattern paper with my stitched rectangle dies. For this focal panel here, I cut a square out of that piece of pattern paper. So you have this really fun cow print on the front and then the back is a denim print. I back that on to some red cardstock that comes in the kit as well. I'm going to adhere the square that I cut out with a stitch square die onto that red cardstock as well. And I'll put that over top of the cutout piece of pattern paper. It's a good way to conserve your paper. No one will ever know that there is a piece missing out of it. 
So for this card, I'm going to use one of the little cowboys. I cut out my oval here. I started off with this card being inspired by one of the sketches and didn't end up following it very much, but there is a square on the sketch. This is sketch number three, and then there's an oval to the bottom left. So I stamped out the sentiment howdy, and then I was trying to figure out how I was going to use some of the twine for the kit, and then I thought, well, it would be really cute if he was holding a lasso. I think that's how you say it. So I just went ahead and I knotted a circle to the top, left a lot of that overhanging there. I'm going to add a glue dot to the back of his hand, and then I'm going to adhere the twine to the back of his hand. And once I get that in place, I had a bit of trouble figuring out how long I wanted it to be, but I will go ahead and secure that tightly in addition to the glue dot with some liquid glue. I did pop him up on some foam tape, and once I get him into place, I will cut off uh, some of the bottom of that twine there that's overhanging. But I wanted to make sure that I had him in place before I did that. So I love how this card turned out. I'm just going to add another glue dot behind that knot there to secure that onto the card. And yeah, I th I'm really happy with this one. I think it's really cute. So for the next card, I'm going to use both the little cowgirl and the cowboy that I colored on screen with you. So for this one, I'm following sketch number four, almost to the T. I am blending out some of my Distress Oxide in antique linen here on an oval shape. So this is the only part that differed from the sketch. I added this oval, which will be the focal panel where my little images will be on it, as well as my sentiment. So I'm using some of the pattern paper from the collection. I loved the plaid paper for the background. I did cut that out with a stitched rectangle die, I believe, or I just trimmed it with my trimmer at four and a quarter by five and a half, which is a standard A2 size card. Loved the little horseshoe pattern paper here, so I chose that for the fishtail banner. And on top of that, the sketch has a longer piece uh, that is just adhered directly over top. So a straight edge as opposed to the fishtail and I really like the look of that. I did just want to trim down this brown pattern paper a little bit more. And I believe this one was left over from the first card that I used. So using up those scraps, which is sometimes why I really love the sketches. They give you ideas that you might not think of. And often with the smaller elements, you can use scraps of paper that you have and get really good use out of your paper pads or your card kits. So once I have these down, I can go ahead and start working on the focal panel. So I'm going to have that placed kind of at the top uh, third of the card. I am just going to try to fit that sentiment to the top. I will bring my Misty back out just to make sure that I get a good impression. So again, I'm just going to use my VersaFine Eclair Nocturne ink for that. This little mini stamp set only has the one sentiment, but it's really cute and you can go ahead and stamp anything you want on the inside. So I think this card makes a really good everyday kind of card or you could turn it into whatever you wanted to celebrate whatever occasion. I think the first card I'm going to use as a birthday card. So now that I have my sentiment stamped, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere our little cowboy and cowgirl onto this focal panel. There was already a lot of dimension with the pattern paper, so I decided not to pop them up on foam tape. I am, I believe, going to flip this around after I get some gel pen detail and just add a couple layers of cardstock to the side of the oval that is going to overhang those pattern papers just so that it's level and there's no dips in this focal panel. So I'm just trying to figure out where I need to adhere that. And again, I'm just using scraps from the pattern paper that otherwise would have gone in my recycling bin. 
And I know that this will be the same height because it's the same thickness of paper as the two banners that I have. So I'll go ahead and adhere that down and then the sketch has a star to the top right hand side so I cut that out of a piece of the pattern paper from one of the collections. It matches the gold in uh, the sheriff's badge there nicely. So there is that card. So moving on to our next card, I'm going to use the collection Your Best Life. This is a stamp and paper pad by Scrapping for Less. Again, gone ahead and cut out my stitched rectangle there for the background. I'm just using a scrap of white cardstock here for my sentiment, which reads, Live Your Best Life. There's some really sweet sentiments in this stamp set. I also went ahead and cut out a stitched oval and that will be the focal panel for my image which is this adorable woman or girl on a little scooter or Vespa. So I colored her up previously watching TV one night. I was getting conscious that this video was going to be quite long. So some of the images like I said I colored with you and then some I did not. But I'm using a scrap again of this pattern paper and I cut out a scalloped edged border. So I'm gonna have that underneath my sentiment strip here and I'm just gonna position the sentiment a bit more to the right of the card. Given she's kind of going in the direction of the left, I wanted to balance that out with having the sentiment more to the right. I'm not going to use any foam dimension at all for this card, but you definitely could if you wanted to step it up a little bit. I'm just going to use my liquid adhesive. This pattern paper is really pretty. It has a whole bunch of different stamps on it like you would have in a passport when you travel. And I liked that it was this really light brown color, and so I chose to color my little Vespa here in the same color. So for some embellishments, I'm going to use the sequins that come in the card kit. I just picked out three of the pink ones, and I'm going to go ahead and add those to my card. Such a cute, quick, clean, and simple card. Love the sentiment. So there's a close-up of that card. Now we can move on to this card, which I'm actually not showing you the process of. This was the card that I made for the sneak peek. I did some no line coloring, but I did want to show it to you in this video, but it is on my social media, which is all linked down below if you wanna follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. Here is a look at all of the six cards I made with you today, plus that first one that I did with the sneak peek, and that was from the Country Roads collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun creating with the kit this month. Let me know if you have a favorite card. Always love to hear which comes out on top. It's usually never the one that I think it's going to be. So thanks everyone for watching. Have a fantastic day and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.